what I wanted to share today was more uh, really an example of kind of practically carrying out a, a piece of work uh, where a client had asked us to uh, basically build a, a search service for them. Um, and I think, uh, so although I've worked in academia for many years, I'm now working uh, as a uh, consultant in a, um, to actually, you know, apply and, and kind of um, uh, actually produce products and services. Uh, and I've noticed that, yeah, uh, there are many challenges to actually, you know, rolling out some of this uh, kind of uh, ideas and materials in practice. So uh, what I wanted to do today was just briefly uh, summarize uh, the kind of work that we did to give you an overview of the project and to highlight some of the things that we learned. So I guess the first place to start is just uh, what we were asked to do in terms of the project scope uh, and the requirements. And actually it was quite simple, I think, from uh, the, the client's end, uh, which was to basically produce a service or provide a mechanism to import data sets, uh, data sets coming from across the organization, which could include library uh, catalog data, uh, could include things like a registrar's data, could include museums data and so on. Uh, and bring those together into a cloud environment. Then what they wanted to do is basically do, do, uh, deduplicate, uh, tag uh, the data and make it all searchable uh, via a search index. But that wasn't it in terms of just the project. Um, it wasn't just about producing a solution. It was also very much about working with the organization, educating the organization and actually building something uh, that could then be taken and used uh, kind of uh, by end users uh, in production. So very much our goal was to produce a framework, uh, to produce a kind of a version, a tool, a methodology, a process showing how technology could be used to kind of uh, help the organization uh, address this problem. So it was a collaborative project uh, between Durham County Council. So in the UK, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the land is divided into uh, local authorities uh, who oversee specific areas. And so Durham is one area in the northeast of the UK. So we worked with Durham County Council and their staff, which included the archivists, included the librarians, as well as the technical team. Um, and we also worked with Microsoft as well. So it was a partnership with Microsoft where they supported us in kind of um, deploying the solution, uh, gave us credits to kind of uh, experiment with things and so on. Uh, in terms of a project, it was a relatively uh, standard uh, approach to the project. But there are three things, I guess, that I would say uh, very much distinguished what we did. I think the first major thing, which is really important, I think when you're doing these projects in practice, uh, was that the solution, the end product was co-created. We didn't just go in, produce a solution, walk away. Uh, we actually worked with the organization. We worked with, uh, for example, the archivists and so on uh, to actually understand uh, how we could build a solution that would meet their needs. Another kind of char characteristic was very much taking an agile based uh, approach in terms of deployment, which means to kind of create things in kind of short uh, sprints, um, you know, as you move throughout the, uh, throughout the project, uh, reflect on it and so on and move on. The other thing I think that was quite important to us was the use of automation through the use of DevOps as well. So we needed to have a whole set of pipelines in place uh, to deal with the fact that the collections that we were getting, uh, the data from the systems are actually live systems where content is being updated, modified all the time. And that means for the search engine, uh, we need to be able to keep things in sync uh, with the end systems. So that was another kind of characteristic. So let me just briefly uh, walk you through the solution that we came up with. As I say, the solution was built with uh, the, uh, the organization with Durham County Council. Uh, so we, they wanted a cloud-based architecture. Uh, in the end, we made use of Microsoft uh, Azure, partly because that is the technology we have the most experience with. Uh, we made use of certain resources available um, through the uh, Microsoft Azure, including things like Data Factory, which enabled us to handle things like the data ingestion and some of the transformation. Uh, we made use of a data lake uh, as a kind of cloud-based storage. Um, for some of the data, including things like images, documents, uh, and so on. Uh, and we used cognitive search as our search as a service capability. Uh, so it meant that we could create a kind of fairly controlled uh, kind of environment in which to build the system um, and kind of build upon uh, what the organization had already. In terms of a solution, I'd say uh, in a nutshell, it, it really comprised of three main things, if you like. 
Uh, and again, we did all these stages in, in collaboration with the client. Um, so uh, first stage, I guess, is about ingestion. So we need to connect to different data sources, which can include things like databases on premise. It can include things like APIs uh, and so on. Then we had to get the data. Not only does it include getting the data the first time around, but it also includes pipelines that are able to deal with transformations, uh, sorry, uh, changes to the underlying source system. So what we call the deltas, those changes. As part of the ingestion, we also applied a series of transformations to clean up the data and do some form of standardization and to bring some of the data sets together. And we had about uh, nine different or 11 different data sets coming from across the organization. Uh, we mapped them to, uh, in our case, a global schema. Uh, then we had an enrichment phase. Uh, so that phase was all about trying to extract a little bit more uh, from the content. For example, identifying names of people, places, and so on. We also uh, did some other uh, work as well, for example, adding spatial information because the client also wanted to, where possible, uh, display and navigate uh, by maps as well. Finally, we have a kind of indexing phase, which is not only creating the search index, but it's also doing things like updating, uh, adding documents, as well as deleting documents, monitoring the index, the search service over time, uh, making refinements and so on. I just wanted to give you a very quick uh, flavor of the types of data that we were dealing with, the collections, which is very typical of a local authority in the UK, which is not only comprising, say, museums, but also includes, for example, archives, uh, local studies, which typically comprise, for example, library catalog material, registrars data, uh, together with, for example, uh, museum data, archaeological data, and so on. So what, what does some of that look like? Uh, here's some example of the data that we were required to index, uh, combine and index. So this, for example, is an example uh, of a photographic uh, archive where you have the material together with the metadata that's um, kind of been built uh, to describe that metadata. Uh, I should also point out that uh, not all the kind of parts of the organization were using standards. So the metadata schema that was used here to describe the images was very much a custom uh, kind of a format schema that had been built up by the organization over time. Uh, we also had things, uh, this is from local history, so it also includes, as well as the archive, we have things like transcripts and oral uh, histories uh, that are also associated with those uh, images uh, and that collection as well. This is another example of the type of data that we're trying to integrate into this kind of unified uh, index. So this is an example of a historic environment record, so archeological uh, data. So this is describing a site, uh, a site of interest, uh, and together with the site of interest, you might have associated images, uh, other kind of, uh, kind of metadata information about uh, that record as well. That's quite different from this sort of data, which is now coming from the archive. So they have very kind of classical kind of archive data, which comprises typically fonts uh, down to kind of items in this kind of structured format. So somehow we had to kind of bring this together as well and make it searchable. Uh, this would be an example of the kind of uh, library catalog data, which is pretty standard uh, bibliographic uh, uh, format, you know, names of name of the uh, kind of the, 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 the record or the, the catalog uh, entry. There's things like the authors, the, the dates and so on. Uh, this is an example of then registrars data. So these are literally registers, lists of uh, births, deaths and marriages. So again, they wanted to make all of this searchable uh, as well. And finally, this is an example of the museum data. So they have a collection called the Durham Light Infantry. It's a military a regiment collection. Again, there's a lot of kind of metadata that comes together with things like images of objects and that as well. So the goal was very much to take all these various, very different uh, collections and somehow bring them together uh, and kind of make them searchable. If I just briefly talk about the kind of ingestion uh, process that we applied and the kind of uh, the, 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 the enrichment or standardization, we basically took the different collections and we had to connect to them. Some of them are on premise, uh, Oracle databases, uh, some of them are through APIs and so on. Uh, so we made use of Azure Data Factory as our kind of uh, ingestion and our ETL, what we call Extract, Transform, Load Pipeline. That enabled us to bring in the data, connect to sources in a secure uh, way, which is important for the organization, uh, and bring that data in in a very managed way uh, that we could manage into a data lake, uh, which is our kind of cloud store. We had different areas in our data lake. Uh, uh, these areas mean that you can kind of separate and secure the data that's stored in the different areas. 
uh, as part of the kind of the, uh, the the process, if you like, of ingestion, we then transformed all the, uh, these, the, the metadata, if you like, from these different collections into a single kind of schema, which was very, very challenging and difficult to do because these data sets are so different. Um, so we had that was a real challenge uh, to the project. So uh, Azure Data Factory, as I mentioned, was our mechanism, our tool, if you like, that we were using, where you can create pipelines to connect to data sources, ingest the data, do various transformations. So a very powerful tool for enabling us to do that in a very secure and managed way. To kind of bring some of these uh, data sets together, there are various ways that uh, we could have done this. Um, we could have indexed them as separate collections. Uh, the approach that we took for this particular piece of work because of the time scale and uh, that, that we had to work within, which was around uh, the whole project beginning to end around nine months. Um, so what we did is we basically uh, tried to create a common uh, global metadata schema. Uh, it is difficult because each collection has its own way of doing things. An archive is very different from a library, which is very different from a registrar's as well. They all have their own processes and way of doing things. But what we did was an exercise of crosswalking uh, and mapping fields between uh, collections. And then we mapped them onto uh, effectively a common schema, which was loosely based upon Dublin Core. Uh, we also had to do quite a lot of flattening. So taking, for example, some of the archival structure and um, uh, pushing it down into a much simpler, flatter structure to, enable, to uh, go into the search index. But the search index is purely, in our case, for uh, resource discovery. So it's only about helping users find relevant stuff. Uh, we still retained links to the underlying systems where you had the full uh, kind of, uh, you know, sort of richness of the underlying metadata. Lots and lots of considerations, challenges involved in this. And again, I think one of the things that was quite important in this project was working with uh, the, uh, the, the organisation as well to work through these issues. So we did this uh, very much together. Uh, so we ended up with quite a simple metadata schema that enabled us to model things in a very, very simple way, but was sufficient uh, and adequate for this particular uh, kind of piece of work. Uh, it isn't the idea, I have to say, if I was to do it again, I would probably make uh, use of perhaps a linked data uh, um, kind of uh, form uh, that we've just seen in a previous presentation. But it was, you know, good enough for now. And it also was a was a mechanism that um, the organisation understood uh, how to do. Uh, so the end result of doing this is uh, some JSON files, JSON documents, which are kind of common uh, uh, sets of fields uh, and so on across the different uh, data records that we had. OK, so finally, I'll just talk a little bit about enriching and indexing uh, the collections before I close. So there was, there's lots of kind of content enrichment that we could do, including content analysis. We could do enrichment of the vocabularies, ontologies. We could have uh, linkage within the collection, uh, between collection, you know, across a collection to external collections and so on as well. Um, in terms of what we ended up doing, I guess the key things that the client said were important to them were from the free text, any free text that we could find, extracting uh, key things like names of people, places, addresses, organizations, dates, and so on. So that was a key thing that we did. Uh, something else that we did was to develop a kind of a, a set of standards uh, for eras or periods. Uh, so although we made use of existing kind of well-known standards in, in the field, uh, we had to customise those to the organisation's needs. We also created quite a broad set of cross-collection subject categories as well. Uh, so again, the types of thing, and again, we did this uh, all in Azure, and we tried to make use of the off-the-shelf services as much as possible to make it an easier solution for the client to then maintain afterwards as well, rather than kind of creating our own customised uh, code. So um, yeah, the types of things that we did, we explored things like uh, named entity uh, recognition uh, using the, the language service tools in Azure. We explored things like extracting, uh, analysing images, extracting a kind of... Uh, uh, subjects from images, uh, descriptions, and so on as well. One of the main things was to identify named entities and keywords, and we did this mainly using the out-of-the-box AI uh, capabilities in Azure, but we found that we had to also uh, kind of uh, do a bit of cleanup after that, uh, and also we wanted to make use of control vocabularies that we used in the organisation. So what we did was basically uh, as kind of apply the AI first, and then apply a post kind of filtering step against the control vocabularies. And that was also useful for being able to navigate uh, across the uh, data as well. The cross collection categories was also important. And this was really challenging because 
uh, we looked at existing kind of uh, standards that we could have used um, and the organization said well actually we have a very custom set of topics or uh, that we have in our mind that we want to use so for example uh, they wanted you know these topics uh, that would run across all the collections so uh, for Durham for example mining is a really really big area they've got lots and lots of data information about mining and local history uh, around mining uh, so what we ended up doing is they created a set of cross collection categories and then we mapped uh, the categories of individual collections onto those. So it would enable you to navigate uh, across the different collections. Uh, if anybody wants more information about this, do please um, uh, contact me afterwards. OK, in terms of the indexing and the search, we ended up using Azure Cognitive Search and we built a number of what's called indexes in their language which enables you to look at a specific source. So we basically organized our kind of data by collections that we had, uh, and uh, we then pulled in, the indexer enables you to pull that data in, in certain schedules. So some data needs to be pulled in rapidly, perhaps every hour uh, and so on. Other collections only need to be updated, refreshed, uh, perhaps every day or uh, every week, every year and so on. So the result of the indexes is to pull the data in, do some enrichment and put it into the index, which is then surfaced uh, through a REST API. Uh, and the REST API can then be used by developers. So that our project wasn't about creating the end front end, uh, the kind of front end. It was very much about giving them the infrastructure and, and showing them how they could uh, kind of integrate and combine different collections. But other people now are working on the front end. The other good thing uh, that Cognitive Service the Search gave us out of the box was the capability of doing some limited kind of uh, geographic search. So being able to kind of do uh, you know search for uh, records within a certain polygon or search for records which have a place reference or location that's so far from a, a, a given point. One of the really challenging parts of the project uh, amongst many was also the notion of keeping everything in sync with the back end uh, systems as well. So we have the search index, which is primarily being used for uh, resource discovery, but we have the back end systems that are changing. And so we had to keep all of that in sync. And so we have pipelines and we built pipelines, not only to handle things like changes to the underlying system, uh, so updates to the index, but also gets really complicated when you start doing deletions as well. And you have to update the records uh, in the index to do that. But we built some pipelines, so everything is automated. If a change is made on the source system, it actually put you know, sort of works its way through to the search index. OK, so just in summary, in terms of some of the things that I learned from doing this uh, project, which is very different from uh, uh, the types of academic projects I uh, had been involved in previously. Um, involving multiple stakeholders was super important. So we had people from across the business at Durham County Council involved in the project. That was super important, especially for things like the uh, interacting with the archivists, where you wanted to get them on your side to manage things like change, to get their buy-in, to enable them to kind of have a say in the project as well. We also had to work closely with the IT department because they were not happy for us to walk in you know, straight into their system. You know, we had to do things in a way that they could pick things up. Now, knowing the data and the domain is super important. And so for us, that was very important to work with the organization, particularly the uh, domain experts like the archivists, the librarians, uh, the registrars and so on. Uh, we tried to keep things as simple as possible. They have a running framework uh, at the moment. It's not the final solution, but it gives them a kind of a methodology, a framework in which they can now go uh, further forward as well. We also started small and we tried to build up. So we started by indexing uh, and working with one collection and then we added more collections as we went along. And that seemed to work uh, quite well. The other thing that we had to keep reminding them is that we're focused, this project was focused on building a search engine that was trying to go, you know, search across the different collections. We weren't replacing the way that they were managing their archives or their kind of existing materials. Uh, OK, so we tried to keep that kind of goal in mind and that eased many of the conversations that we had. Uh, the final thing was, I guess, around managing expectations and particularly about, around managing costs. So with Azure, it can become quite costly. Uh, so there is a kind of a, a trade off there. And so we tried to do as much as possible to, you know, uh, reduce the amount of cost that would end up going back uh, to the client, especially during the uh, development phase. And just finally, just to show you what it would look like, the final system. So before you used to have to search different collections, uh, different web uh, uh, kind of sites and, and portals to be able to kind of get the access to the underlying data sets. 
So here, for example, if now, if somebody searched, this is just a demo interface, if somebody searched for Peter Lee, who is a, a kind of a well-known figure in the Northeast, um, you would get a bunch of documents back. So you could get information from the uh, photographic collections, the archives, so pictures of Peter Lee. We could get, for example, uh, uh, now records coming back from the historic environments and the, archaeolog uh, the ar archaeological records. So here is the cemetery where he was uh, buried and here's the tombstone, uh, here's the home. But you could also get access to things like books as well from the library. So here are books written about Peter Lee. The other thing which you can't see, which is at the bottom, is that you could also get access to the registrar's data. So you'd be able to actually get to the point where you could go uh, to the library or to the registrar's office to get uh, the book where the uh, the kind of, you know, the the, the death or the uh, birth of Peter Lee was actually registered. And so this enables for the first time the uh, organisation to kind of bring uh, all this data together. Uh, so I think that's the end of my presentation. Um, thank you very much.